Hi everybody. Today I would like to discuss on the valuation of freehold interest. This is my lecture outline. The first topic that I would like to discuss is on the freehold property. Second is going to be property interest. The third one is going to be the reason for freehold interest valuation. The fourth one is on the freehold valuation. And the fifth one is on the case study example. So, there are two types of freehold property. First is the property that for the freeholder, landlord, owner's own use or occupation. The second type is the property that is being let out to the leaseholder or tenant for a certain period of time with term and condition as stipulated in the tenancy agreement. This type of property is also known as a business property due to the income generated from the business lease or tenancy. So, this lecture will focus on valuation of the freehold interest only concerning to the leasing and tenancy. Reason to value the freehold interest. There are many reasons for valuing freehold interest and mainly in the situation where the tenant is asking for surrender of the existing lease or the existing tenancy with the renewal for the future long lease and then this happen when the new rent required by the landlord would be based on the equation of the value of the preholds, present and proposed interest. The tenant might ask for the reduction of the rent to be paid provided that the tenant agrees to pay some amount of premium to the landlord at the beginning of the new lease. So this is uh, uh, just some of the reason to value the freehold interest, but in reality, there is so many other reasons to value the freehold interest. Okay, this is the types of business lease. So they will be the same just like the type of business lease term for the leasehold interest. Okay, when we go to the freehold valuations, most appropriate valuation method is going to be the investment method, just same as the leasehold valuations. Basis to value is based on the net income per annum to be received by the landlord, the period for which the net income to be received, this is the lease term, the required always year to calculate the year's purchase value, Freehold interest is valued on a single rate basis, term and reversion valuations. Okay, we go to the use of term and reversion. So, when we value the freehold interest, we use to found right, the use of term and valuation. We need to value what is the value of the term and the value of the reversion rate. Okay, this is due to that. When you enter into agreement, alright, for the certain period of time, when you times goes by, okay, the agreed rent that previously, uh, that previously that you agreed with the landlord or you the tenant, does become historic. Then you become the lower compared to the market rent. Okay. And then at, set, at a certain period, right, the open market rent is much higher compared to the rent that the tenants paid or the landlord received because of the tenancy agreements. This is a certain period of time that make the rent is become lower compared to the market rent at that uh, times, alright, because when time goes by and then we are actually acknowledge the growth of inflation, so the actual rent actually that paid by the land by the tenant is much lower compared to the market rent that is fair in the market at that time, alright. So due to that, we need to value for the freehold interest based on the value of the term of lease and based on the value of the reversionary term. Reversionary term is that 
the value of the property or the interest after the tenancy ended. So, this affiliate is referred to as the revision and the period of proceeding to the revision is called as a term. Okay, we go to the case study example 1. Okay. We have a freehold shop is let at existing rent of the 50,000 per annum net. The full rental value is estimated at 100,000 per annum. The capitalization rate at full rental value is 5%. There are three years left on the lease to rent. Calculate the capital value of the freehold shop. And then we need to value what is the value of the freehold interest. Okay. So, before we start with the, our working answer on valuing this uh, prequel interest, there is a certain item that we need to take into consideration. The first, there are two different rents that need to be capitalized. Right? The first is the RM50,000 per annum receivable for the next three years until the expiry of the term. Okay? And then the second uh, rents that we need to capitalize is a market rent. This is a FRB, 100,000 per annum, supposed to be receivable in perpetuity by the landlord, but this amount only can be receivable to the landlord in perpetuity after the tenancy is ended, which is deeper three years. Okay, and then the rest will be the same. Okay, we go to the working answer, yeah. So, this is the diagram for the uh, lease term for this question, alright. At the date of valuation, we can find out that they still have the three years unexpired term before reaching the end. Okay, for the next three years, the landlord received 50000 per annum. And when we check in the market that the same type of property is let at the 1000 per annum however the landlord only can enjoy or any, only can use these uh, amount of rent market rent okay after the tenancy ended which is deeper three years to the date of valuation so when we go to the calculations of the prehold interest first we need to value what is the value of the unexpired term at this case is a three years this three years value of the unexpired term and then from the calculation with the multiplier for the yp three years at the four percent we get this is the value of the unexpired term for the landlord which is a one thousand one hundred thirty eight thousand and then the second one, we go to the value for the reversionary. Okay, reversionary value is that the value that the landlord can enjoy after the tenancy ended. So, the value must be revert to the market rent, which is will be revert to the full rental value. At this stage, the market rent is 100000 per annum. And then, of course, this amount of 100,000 will be returned to the landlord at a perpetuity because landlord is the owner of the property. So when the tenant return the property to the landlord after the tenancy agreement ended, all right, so the, the tenant return to the landlord at a perpetuity level. So the landlord receive the property after the tenancy ended at a perpetuity level so but however the landlord only can have the property back to him after the tenancy and that which is after three years so at this case 1000 per and 100000 per annum that's supposed to be enjoyed by the landlord only can be received after three years which is deeper three years so the capital value i mean the, the value for the reversionary at this case is about the 1.7 million so 
we need to total up the value of the unexpired term and then the value of the revisionary to the market rent. So we get the amount of the value for the freehold interest at the is about 1.8 million. And then we go straight go to the second uh, question. It's on the freeholder currently receive a rental income of the 100,000 per annum under a FRA lease rented three years ago for a term of the 25 years with the five-year rent review. So at this case, right, the term of lease is arranged, is agreed, yeah, with the five-year rent reviews, all right. And then for the next rent review, all right. The market rent indication is about RM 100, 150,000. So, this 150,000 cannot be enjoyed by the preholder now. He only can enjoy this 150,000 after the first rent review. Right? Because the first rent review, they already agreed on the uh, rent at the 100,000. But this is a being arranged or being agreed three years ago. So they still have the two years to go for the next rent review and then the landlord can receive 150000 So in that case, we go to the our diagram here. Okay. When you look at the diagram here, so the term of lease that they agreed is for the 25 years with the five year for the five rent review, five years rent review. So they have a five years rent review here. So at the date of valuation, we find out that so the expired term of the lease is three years, and then we still have two years unexpired term to the next review. For for the next review, alright, which is a uh, another two years time, alright, the rent at this point is 150,000. The agreed rent that they received well, three, three years ago is 100,000. But these 100,000 will be received to the landlord. Landlord will receive this amount for the next two years. Okay, after two years, the rent will be revised to the 150,000. So we look on the valuation for the preferred interest here. So first we work up on the unexpired term value. So we have here unexpired term value for the next two years by receiving hundred thousand. So we have the value of the unexpired term for about one hundred and eighty thousand. And then for the next review is another two years time. Okay. Or right. reversion to the next review. Next review all right, will be the hundred and fifty. But this, alright, 150 only can be obtained, only can be granted, only can be receivable by the landlord after two years on the next review. So that's why I say that why people actually did for two years. Okay, and then we have the reversionary value based on the amount 150,000 that the landlord should receive after two years which is after next review is about 1.6 million so we total up the value of the unexpired term and then the value of the revisionary so we get the capital value of the freehold interest which is about 1.7 million we go to the case study example three okay this example three all right this is is about the office building was let four years ago okay same uh, for repairing insurance term all right for the next 14 years but this lease agreement they agree on the uh, two review for the next 14 years which is the first seven years they agreed for the five thousand per annum and the second seven years will be agreed for the six thousand per annum. So the current rental value is seven thousand per annum. So when we go for the our working answer, we can see here, alright, case study example three. Alright, you look at this case study example three. Alright, so T 
this is our date of valuation. On the date of valuation, we can see that, okay, for the next three years and expired term, okay, to the next review, for the next review, alright, so, we still receiving, alright, 5,000 per annum until the next review, okay, until the next review, we will receive 5,000 per annum. So, here we get a year for the first 7 years unexpired term, which is a 3,000, a 3 years unexpired term. So, the value for the first 7 years unexpired term, which is 3 years, we have the value here is about 13,000. And then, you must remember that we still have the second unexpired term, the second, the second 7 years for the unexpired term. So, for the second uh, 7 years unexpired term, which is for the next 7 years, alright, the landlord will re be receiving 6,000 per annum. However, this only can be receivable to the landlord after, okay, after the first 3 years unexpired term ended, which is deeper 3 years. See here, which is deeper three years, deeper three years. So the six thousand that the landlord should receive on the seven or on the eight years here, okay, only can be received after three years, after the three years unexpired term ended. Okay, that's why why people seven years at six thousand only can be receivable to the landlord after three years. This means deep what three years. So the value for the second seven years unexpired term is about twenty nine thousand. And then we go for the reversionary value to the market rent. Okay, for the full rental market value as per question is a seven thousand. And then of course after the tenancy end on the year or at the end of the year fourteen, alright. So the property will be returned to the owner will be returned to the landlord but they only can return to the landlord after the tenancy agreement ended which is after 10 years that's why the 7,000 per annum only can be enjoyed only can be granted only can be obtained by the landlord after 7 years which is deeper 10 years alright so the reversionary value to market rent is about 65,000. So, the total of the freehold interest is, is the sum up of the value of the term and the value of the reversionary, which is about 108,000. Okay, we go to the case study example here. So, this is a more complicated or a quite complex, alright? So, it's about a lease granted with the step rent range so they have a step rent arrangement for every year all right where the first three years is agreed at the fifty thousand. however there is a pre-arranged further increase to six thousand sixty thousand per annum for the next second year so it seems that every year they have a different um they, uh, they have a different rental uh, payment at the, or rental receipt, all right, and then subsequently, all right, after the third year, they will be received the seventy thousand. So when we look at here, all right, so we go to the the, the diagram here that I already uh, work up for this uh, calculation, all right. So we have this a uh, three years term lease, all right. Okay, the date of valuation is here. Okay, for the first year, okay, the agreed uh, rental payment or rental receivable is a 50,000, okay. And then also for the second year of the rent receivable is 60,000. And then the third rent receivable is also 60,000, okay. So, even though, alright, the... Uh, this agreement, alright, for the three years, but they have the pre arrangement that if the market rent 
is higher compared to the rent received, right? the landlord might increase the rent received at the first year of the lease from 50000 to the 60000 So this is the arrangement they make between the landlord and the tenants. So at this stage, all right, we go to the valuation of the term. So of course, we have these three steps of doing the valuation. First, we look on the value of the term. So value of the term, we go for the first term. The first term is going to be the first year rent receivable is a 50,000. So why pay one year? We got here is a 7,000. So we have the value of the term for the first year is a 46,000. And then we go to the second year. Okay. For this second year, all right, reversion rate to intermediate rent. All right. So rent received is 60,000. But this 60,000 only can be okay only can be enjoyed can be receivable by the landlord yeah after the second year after the second year all right yeah so that's why for the sec after the second year all right and then they will be enjoyed for the second and the third year towards the end of the tenancy yeah that's why when we do the valuation for the second stage of the uh, rent receivable by the landlord. So we go to the reversion rate to the intermediary rent, which is rent received is 60,000. Okay, this will be received by the landlord is for two years. Okay, second year and third year. Alright, and then we get the value of the term for the intermediary rent of the second and the third year is about 100,000. Okay. And then we go for the reversionary to the market value. So once the tenancy ended, the property will be returned to the landlord. But returned to the landlord, deferred three years, and then the FRB at the seventy thousand. So the value is a six thousand and ninety four, six hundred and ninety four thousand for the reversionary to market rent value. So. The total sum of the valuation for the freehold interest for this case study example 4 is the value of the term plus the value of the reversionary and then we get the capital value of the freehold interest is about 800,000. Thank you for watching.